So having known how to calculate the rate of a reaction in the previous video, you know, rate is directly proportional to the concentration of the various reactant species. And then we are going to learn how to um, determine the rate law and also how to um, determine the reaction order. Now, this is a general representation of the rate law with an integer here. Let's say that's an integer m, and this is another one n. So, this is the general expression for a rate law. Okay, so how do we experimentally determine the rate law of a given reaction? That is the essence of this video in terms of the reaction order. A plus B given C plus A. Now the rate is dependent upon the reactants. We don't have any business with the product. So addition or removal of product does not affect the rate of the reaction. So but it's only dependent on the reactants only. Now we are going to define the various variables. What is K? We're going to learn how to determine the rate constant, which is K. Okay, then we're going to determine the order. M and N are the order of the, of the, of the reaction. So these are the integers that stands for the reaction order. So we're going to learn how to determine these two and that. The rate constant, the reaction order by making use of this general equation for any reaction now what is the purpose of the rate law why do we have to postulate a rate law now the rate law is to predict the rate of the reaction for any of the combinations of the reactants so it is used to predict what happens to the concentrations or whichever volume of the reactant as the reaction progresses now let's define what the rate constant k is what is this rate constant we're talking about now the rate constant takes into consideration variables associated with temperature pressure um let's say catalyst so any variable associated with the state of the system the system is uh, the reaction system A plus B that has to affect the state of the system, the pressure, the temperature at which the reactants are being subjected, the presence of catalysts. So that is what the rate constant incorporates. So it is dependent on the, react, um, the reaction condition surrounding the system, you know, in for the reactants. So it takes into consideration temperature, pressure, catalyst. And that means the rate constant can only be constant once temperature, pressure, catalyst, etc. are kept constant. Now let's talk about um, the integers m and n. As you can see, when I wrote this general rate law, I had an integer here. Let's say this is b. This is the order. So what are these orders? Okay, what do you get to derive from these powers here so they are called the reaction order now you can call them also exponents okay they are the reaction order so basically they determine the extent to which the reaction rate is affected by concentration so this determines the extent to which the reaction rate is affected by changes in concentration of the reactant so the degree to which the reaction rate affects concentration, because we know reaction, um, the rate of reaction is directly proportional to concentration, concentration of the reactant. So this determines the extent to which the rate affects the concentration of the reactant. That is the purpose of the reaction order. So M and N, M for one reactant and N for the other reactant. If, for example, Let's say m is equal to 1. This means something. It means that doubling the concentration of A will double.
probable rate of reaction. So if M equals to 1, it means doubling the concentration of A, you can see M, doubling the concentration of A is going to double the rate of reaction. But if M is equals to 2, it means doubling the rate of reaction of B, concentration of B, is going to quadruple times 2. When it's 1, it is times 2. When it's 2, it's times 2. That means the rate is going to quadruple. That means 4 times. When it's 1, when the other is 1, the rate is going to double. That is 2 times. Okay? Double and quadruple. This is just an example. Now, let's look at a given set of values and then be able to um, derive the rate order, the rate constant for a given set of data related to what you have in your set of observation. Now, let's take a look at this set of observations. This is experiment A, this is B, this is C. These are just the serial numbers and this is concentration of A. Okay, this concentration could be in volume or it could be in molar, you know, concentration. So, but I'm not designating their units yet. So let's take a look at this. If this is one volume, two volume, one volume, okay? Concentration of the first reactant. And then here you see um, the second one, one volume, one volume, two volume. And the time required for this reaction to take place in this first run is 0 0.5 seconds the average time so i designated that with tx after getting the average time you know in the previous video you were able to know how these things react and how to time now the rate of reaction here could be calculated as the inverse of time i'm taking the rate of reaction here now as the inverse of this so 1 over 0 0.5 is 2 1 over 0, 0 0.5 is 2 1 divided by 0 0.25 is 8 so this is what I'm considering, this column, I'm considering this as the rate of the reaction. And this is addition of water. In the first place, no water was added. In the second instant, um, one volume, two volume was added. So I'm going to take this one where no volume of water was added to be my control. Then I'm going to establish a rate law equation which says previously I've stated that, okay, for the reactant. So A is that, B is that. So I have to know also the order. I want to find the order of the reaction, okay? I could find the order of the reaction, then come back to find the rate constant. Now, since we know our rate of reaction too, let's take this as our control experiment a which had zero volume of water added so i'm going to have let me um designate it with ra the first experiment let me just use a now what is the rate for a the rate is two that means two is equal to k we don't know the rate constant yet then we'll have a what was the concentration of a at reaction rate two for the first experiment you can see here so the volume here or the concentration here was one. I'm going to have one raised to the power m, which what's that's what I'm looking for. Then b is also one raised to the power n. Now the same thing I'm going to do for the next experiment, the next one. This is b. Okay, I have b. B. What was the rate of reaction? Look at it. It's two. Also two. Okay. This is just an example, so this could differ from your own observation during the experiment. So this is my k, but following this method will still give you, make you arrive at your right answer. What was the concentration of A for experiment 2 when one volume of water was added? It is 2, I have 2 here. Then I'm still looking for M. What was the concentration for B? It is 1. I have this. All right, so I go to the next experiment. This is C. I could just take three. You could just take three points or depending just to find what M and N is. So the rate of reaction here is eight. So I have eight equals to K 
home bracket eight I have eight what was a f one then I have m b is two raised to the power n now you can see I've established different rates equations for each of the experiments that we have conducted okay now the next thing is I'm going to make use of this where I had zero addition of water to serve as my control so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide a experiment by b experiment to find the value of m then I'm also going to divide a experiment by C to find the value of M. So I believe you might have taken that down already. So this is actually the method of initial rates to determine the rate order. So I said I'm going to divide A by B for the first instant to get the value of M. Then I'm going to divide A by C to get N. So A by B is going to be, what was the rate? From what I've written earlier, I had 2 um, equal to, that was K into A. And A was what? A was 1. So into M, then into 1 again. Into N. So divide by... What was B? You can see here, the rate was also 2. Okay, this is going to be the division line here. So I still have K. A concentration of volume is 2. I have M. K is 1. Then I have N. Then, look at it. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay? Now you can see that this K can cancel. All of this can go with all of that. So I'm going to be left with 1 over 2 all raised to power m. Indices law, once you have powers like this divided, you can take just 1 to represent them. So 1 over 2 raised to power m is the same thing as 1 raised to power n divided by 2 raised to power m. Now, 1 is equals to 1 over 2 raised to power m. Now, for this equation to be correct, Okay, remember indices a raised to the power 0 equals to 1. Okay, for me to make this value to be 1, I will have to raise m must be equal to 0. So I'm going to have 1 is equal to 1 over 2 raised to the power 0. So 1 over 2 raised to the power 0 is 1. That means 1 equals to 1. That's to tell you m must be equal to 0. For this equation to be correct that means my value of m equals zero so this is how you find the order of the reaction with respect to a which is you can see here my m is zero so now to find the value of n i'm going to be dividing experiment a by c and re using the same rate law equation so what is a a the rate of equation is two so i have two equals to k which is the rate constant then the values of a now one raised to power m now i've just found m anyways then that of b is one raised to power n so i'm dividing by experiment c the same you know the rate of equation the rate of reaction here is eight so i have k concentration of a is one concentration of b is two you can see there then raised to power n then i divide two here this is going to be one over four k can cancel k one all of that cancel so i'm left with one over two raised to the power of n so According to indices, for this equation to be correct, that means n has to be equal to 2 because 1 raised to power 2 is 1, 2 raised to power 2 is 4. So you see, that means my n integer is 2. Okay, that is the constitution of b, second order with respect to b, it's a second order. Why? 
m equals to zero it's a zero order with respect to a this is just for an example now since we know the values of m is zero and is two and what is going to be our rate constant we still use the same equation which we've earlier written you can see r equals to k um, concentration of a raised by m b raised by n so for each of the experiments a b and c we're going to be finding the rate constant for each of those experiments so for example experiment a the rate of the reaction is two you can see there the concentration of a is one m is zero okay and then what's the concentration of b for experiment one is one raised to power n n is two so we just have to solve to get our rate constant so um this is two equals to k anything raised to power zero is one so this times one times one raised to power one so two equals to k okay the unit of rate constants um you can use um centimeter cube per second or you can use molar per second okay so but in this case i'm not showing all those units now let's go to c the experiment c i'm just going to change concentration of a to be two concentration of b to be one then i still maintain the integers that's m and n so two raised to power zero is one and that you're still going to get um k to be equals to two sorry that was supposed to be n equals to two right there so let's go to the third one in this case the rate of reaction is eight then we'll have concentration of a is one then the concentration of b is two yeah this is supposed to be two n is two right then we have to solve this here's the power zero yeah this is n is two let me correct this now our n is 2 over here so 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 so once you multiply all that k times 1 times 4 is going to be 4k so you divide both sides by 4 once you do that you still find that the rate constant is 2 so this is how you get to find the rate constant of this set of values you could obtain from your experiment now finally let us write a final rate law having found the values of m n and k with respect to the concentrations of the reactant so it's going to be what is our rate constant that's two more per second or one centimeter cube per second or you can use molar per second depending on the unit you're making use of in your experiment that's what is going to be the unit for your rate constant so we have a raised to power um m is zero then we have um b which is your other reactant just check the ions this a and b can stand for the ions involved in the reaction and we all know that um anything raised to power zero is one so i can just eliminate that and just put the concentration of b so it's just going to be b raised to power 2 so this is a general rate general rate law for this particular set of observations